Hey everybody and welcome back to Ancient Ways for Modern Days. Once again, my name is Mike Freeman. I'm the pastor at Valley Christian Fellowship in Longview, Washington. And today we are in Luke chapter 23. We are the second to the last chapter and we are in the, the chapter of great heartbreak. This is the chapter of of Jesus's, uh, ultimately his crucifixion and his death. And, and in this chapter, there is a there, there's many different places we can land, many different aspects that we can that we can think about. And I encourage you, if you're following the Valley reading plan, that you read this chapter slowly, that you take the time to allow these events to to captivate your mind and, and your heart, um, especially as we're, you know, we're leading up to Easter. Easter is not far from now as we record this and as we read in our, in our Bible reading plan. It's really just uh, right around the corner. And so let this chapter uh, let it uh, prepare you for this Easter season as we come to Good Friday and we remember the the horror of Christ and his crucifixion. And then as we come to Easter and we celebrate in the resurrection, which we'll, we'll cover that tomorrow in chapter 24. But today in chapter 23, I want to talk about um, this, this interchange Jesus has while he's on the cross. Let me show you what I mean. Let's Let's jump into the text, Luke chapter 23, starting in verse 32. Here's what the scripture says. It says, Two others who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, there they they crucified him and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And they, the soldiers around him, cast lots to divide his garments. And Jesus, he is being crucified. He's got criminals on both sides. And as he's being crucified, he prays to the Father that the Father would forgive those who are perpetrating this great crime against him. Jesus is innocent. He says that they know not what they do. It says, and when the people stood by watching, but the rulers scoffed at him saying he saved others let him save himself if he is the christ the god his chosen one the soldiers also mocked him coming up and offering him sour wine and saying if you are the king of the jews save yourself religious leaders they're they're basically gloating here that Jesus, who was threatening their popularity and, and he, was, he was crowding in on their power in the religious realm, they, they couldn't stand it. And so they had conspired to have him arrested and now he's being crucified. They are, they're the winners in their mind. And they're gloating. They're mocking him. Yeah, yeah, right. Sure, you're the Messiah. If you really are the Messiah, do something about it. Soldiers come, give him sour wine, and they say, if you were the king of the Jews... Save yourself. There was also an inscription over him. This is the king of the Jews. Mocking, mocking him in his death. Verse 39, one of the criminals hanged, railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Look at this criminal. He says, look, we deserve to be crucified. We deserve this consequence. We are, we are criminals. We deserve this death. This is, look at his words, the due reward of our deeds. But this man, Jesus, he's done nothing wrong. Even the criminals understand the mock trial of Christ. Even the criminals understand the absurdity of Jesus being crucified. They understand that he has done nothing wrong. Verse 42, and he he said to Jesus, he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Look at Jesus' response. And he, Jesus, said to him, truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. This is tremendous. This man who knows the depth of his sin repents on the cross. 
He confesses he is a sinner. And then he looks to Christ for salvation. He says, remember me. And Jesus' words, he says, today, this very day, you, even though you are a sinner, just like Zacchaeus, remember that story? Just like the, the, the woman who is a, uh, a woman of the night who, who came and washed Jesus' feet with her tears and anointed them with ointment. Just like these sinners who came to Christ repentantly and are welcomed into the kingdom of God, this man on the cross hears Jesus say, today you will be with me in paradise. Here's what we see today. Here's, here's the ancient way for our modern day that we've seen over and over again in the book of Luke. Repentance, humility before Christ leads to Christ having compassion and forgiveness toward us. What a beautiful truth. Isn't this just the core of the gospel? Jesus died to save sinners. <laughs> And you and I are those sinners and you and I are those who, who we can be arrogant and, and pr- full of pride and haughty in our attitude. We can be like the Pharisees and the, the soldiers who mock Christ and the crowds who mock Christ and who say, we don't need this Christ. Look at, we're better than him. We, we are above him. Or we can be like this humble, dying, sinning criminal who turns to Christ in his repentance, in his humility. And Jesus says, Ye, you will be welcomed into paradise with me. Well, what attitude do you have toward Christ? As, as we come to the end of this gospel, are you still covering your sin? Are you still hiding your sin? Are you still, are you still walking in pride and in arrogance? Listen, brother and sister in Christ, whether how old or how young you are, whether you've been following Jesus for decades or for days, listen, hear this wonderful truth of the scripture. You and I, when we come to Christ in humility, he welcomes us. But when you and I, when we walk through life without humility, ultimately Christ will humble us. (laughs) Those who are humble are exalted and those who are proud will be humiliated. This is... This is how we come to Christ. It's not on our terms. It's not with our pride, but it's coming to him on his terms. He is king. He is savior. He is Lord of lords. You and I, we come to him broken and humble, and we receive his grace and forgiveness. And ultimately, I want you to see something. Jesus doesn't say to this man, you will today, you will go to purgatory and you will pay for your sins. And then someday you will be with me in paradise. Jesus doesn't say, today you will be be sleeping, you will have soul sleep, and you will be in the grave until I return. No, he says, today you will be with me in paradise. That is a promise from the lips of our Savior to to the hearts and the minds and to the ears of those who repentantly trust him and have faith. This is our ancient way for our modern day. Once again, come to Christ in humility, repent, and receive the promise of salvation.